Accountability. Look, if you're a business owner, what time's your business open? I mean, what kind of business ain't open? Think about it. If you went over to that store right there and it, and it, it was and there was lights were off and it wasn't open, would you think that's a, a business? You'd be like this bit. If you honestly, if you went over there to that that store right there next door, right, and you knocked on the door and there was nobody inside, right, and there's no sign saying I'll be back in 20 minutes. Right, you might think that store is shut down because it wouldn't make any sense. What time is it? It's ten o'clock in the morning, right? It's a store, right? If they're not nobody in there running the store, you might think that thing shut down. You might be like, is this business closed? It must be closed. This business must be shut down because what kind of business ain't open? You tell me. What kind of business is not open? If you're a business owner, where is your store open at? How are you going to run a successful business if you're not even open? Think about it. And and what what kind of, how much uh how well would that guy do that owns that store if he was sitting on his couch and calling people and asking them if they want a candy bar? Think about it. Wouldn't he be more successful having his store open? Well, he's sitting on his couch calling his friends. Hey, you want to buy a Mountain Dew from me? What kind of business would that be? How about be be on location and have the front the door open and have that thing popping? That's how you're gonna run a business. Imagine that. Do you think that guy's ever sat at his house and tried to get, call people to get him to buy stuff from his store, or do you think he opens up shop and sells stuff out of his store? Think about it. Wait, what time is your business open, Bob? What kind of business would he do if he put big A-frame signs up front, big banners, free cigarettes? Free beer. Yeah. Free donuts. Everything's free. Come on in. Yeah. How many people will be lined up? Yeah. You got free phones. You're giving away a value of like hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year yep. to people that are desperate for them. Right. Unless your store is open, yeah. your life is closed. Yeah. When you go to Walmart, do you wonder if it's open? Nope. No, it's open. You don't wonder? You don't call before you go and see if they're they're, they're open or not? Why not? Because they're open. Right, because they're a successful business. What kind of successful business ain't open? Think about it. If you're running a business, how is your business, where is it open? Where's your open sign at? Where's your sign set up at? Where's your tent set up at? Where's your schedule? How are you running your own business? Think about it. We Look, you guys, we're trying to pump out professional entrepreneurs out of this office, people that got their stuff together and are running successful businesses. And that means you, 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 and you, and all of y'all, not nobody not included. We're not just trying to do lectures here. We want to see you guys profitable. We want to see you guys actually doing a good job out at work. And if you're not doing five, six days a week, you're not running your business full time. So we have a basic, basic standard here, five or six days, 40 or more hours, right? So let me break it down for you. That means that you would pick one day off. So that, that'd be a good start, right? If you're going to work five, six days, if I was you, I'd start with six until you're balling and you can afford to take an extra day off. That's the way I would look at it. I, that, I work six days a week, so I don't know how you're, you're, you're working less than me. That don't make no sense. I'm, I, I got stuff popping six days a week, and on Sunday, I'm still doing stuff, even though it's my day off. I'm constantly grinding. So if you want the formula for success, to get in line, because I'm telling you how to do it. You got to stay profitable. You got to have things in order. Look, you got to have some accountability where you get up at a certain time and make it happen. You, you ain't going to make it that far if you can't even get yourself to get out of the house in the morning and go set up at a decent time. You sitting around doing whatever till five o'clock in the afternoon. What kind of business is that? You're supposed to be open at eight, nine o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the afternoon is too late. Unless you're a leader that's popping off a hundred sale weeks, you should not be posting your first sale at, at noon or one o'clock. That don't make no sense. That does not make no sense for you to be posting your first sale in the afternoon like you're just chilling. Like that makes no sense. Like don't you see what kind of opportunity this is? Don't you see what kind of great momentum we got at this company? 
You think that I got where I'm at doing that? That's not how I got here. I got here by getting up early and grinding and going to sleep and making sure I'm asleep at night so I could get back up and staying up as late as I can, accomplishing as much as I can, pushing myself the very most my body can even handle. And then learning what those limits are. You understand what I'm saying? I'm talking about learning what those limits are where I'm getting up early and I'm grinding as long as I can and I'm learning. I'm like, dang, I got to get a little bit more sleep than that because I'm pushing myself too thin. If you're not tapped into that, you ain't following me because that's what I'm on. I'm on that grind trying to figure out the most I could possibly push myself to accomplish the very most I can without running myself thin or being sick or something. I'm serious. Like, I'll be like, dang, man, I got five hours. I got to get a little bit more sleep than that. You know, I got to make sure I actually rest on my rest day. Do you know how many weeks I've felt like that? Almost all of them. Almost all the weeks since I started this business, when it's time for my day off, I'm literally like so ready for my day off. I'm talking about I'm super spent by Sunday every week. Every week by Sunday, I'm like, and I done maxed out. Like I got it. And then, and then I'm coaching myself, Bobby, you got to make sure to, to actually get some rest on Sunday. No, you can't, you, you're, you're going to run yourself thin for next week. If you don't actually get some rest on Sunday, that's how I'm pressing while people are sleeping in and, and being mediocre. It don't make no sense to me. I know you guys want, I know you guys see the success. I know you guys want to achieve it. I know you hear all the stuff I talk about and you want it too. But then yet when I tell you how to get it, you're me, you're posting sales at five o'clock in the afternoon. Like you, like you, you don't think we see it or something. You don't think the leaders in the company recognize that? I got admin tells me that they give out devices to people and the people come back in and they're like, Oh, can you renew this sheet for me? Why? Why are you taking out a whole sheet of devices and you ain't selling them? I, I mean, at some point, somebody's got to be like, dude, wake up. Somebody's got to be like, yo, chick, wake up. What are you doing? What is your plan with life? Are you just going to keep acting like that your whole life? Or are you going to actually pick up some momentum and get serious about being successful? You, It's got to get come to a certain point. Right? Sometimes the little tickle your heart messages might not work for some people. Some people need a more abrupt go to work. Stop being lazy. Wake up. Stop sleeping in. Stop acting like headed straight up in some lame situation that we're just going to let you walk all over us. Go to work. Like, we need people that are going to take this job serious, man. Some of you guys, I feel like you're playing me. Some of you guys, I'm like, are they working somewhere else and, and then working here too or acting like they're working here? I'm serious. There's sometimes I'm like, are they actually leaving meeting and going and working somewhere else? Like, how is it possible that they have that many sales on the week? You could go out there and not say nothing. You could just hold a sign up all week and get three times as many as some people get. So I know you're not working here full time. There's no way. So as in it, now look, that's accountability. That's just me saying, yo, you work for this company, do what you're supposed to be doing. But look at this. Let's look at it from another angle. You're a business owner, right? Don't you want to be doing the best job you possibly can for yourself? Like, let's, let, let's not even think about my part in this and the accountability and what you you doing what you said you were going to do when you came to this company let's talk about what's best for you do you think what's best for you and your company is to just not do a good job is that really what you want to do be the type of person that says they're going to do something but doesn't do it be the type of person that tries to dodge the radar and Oh, yeah, maybe they won't notice. I'll just not work. I'll sleep in. I'll just keep getting high or whatever else is going on that's keeping you from being successful. What is what is going to make it happen for you? Because this is a great deal here, you guys, but it's not even just about here. You can't be successful nowhere in life unless you do a good job. Where are you going to be successful at if you don't go to work? Think about it. I know you guys love it here. I know you want to do a good job, but you're not. Some of you guys aren't doing a good job. 
You need accountability. You need to look at your schedule and figure out Monday through Sunday when you're working. You need to know that instead of just going off what you feel like every day. How about come up with some accountability like by 9 a.m. every day I'm posting my first sale. How about a new way to go like that by or whatever your time is. Like I said, you can pick it. But what is it? 9 a.m.? 10 a.m.? You got to have a time in your head when you're, you got to have a no matter what in your head. That's how you're going to make it. That's how I do it. No matter what, I'm getting this much by this time. That you got to have some kind of a standard. No matter what, I'm getting this much by such and such time. So what time are you going to get how many by? Think about it. Are you going to have your first sale by 9 a.m.? 10 a.m., 11 a.m., right? If, you, if you're posting at noon your first sale, explain it to me. Pull me to the side after me and explain to me how you're doing that in life. I, I just want to know. Like, do you have like a reserve of cash or something that we don't know, none of us know about? Are you bought? Do you inherit some money? You inherited something? Are you about to cash out? Somebody's about to give you like a quarter million in a couple weeks or something? Because that's the only way I would it would make any sense to me that you're not posting your first sale early in the morning. How are you waiting till noon, one, some people five, six, seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. I would feel ashamed of myself. I would feel absolutely ashamed of myself if it was nighttime and I'm posting my first sale. I would feel like I'm letting myself down, the company down, my family down. I, would, I wouldn't even be able to look at my kids. I'd be like, man, I can't even look at them. I'm doing so horrible at my job. I, I just feel ashamed. I'd have to go to sleep and wake up and have a better day the next day. That would make me feel horrible if that's how I was producing. I'm being real with you. When I was in the magazine business, if I didn't have a good day, I wouldn't eat that anyone, nobody to see me. It barely ever happened. And when it happened, it was because I chose it. But by the time the end of the day would came, I would feel horrible about it. I'd be like, man, I don't want my boss to see me, man. God, I hope he doesn't call me to the office. Ah, please don't let him call me to the office. I do not want to look at him after I just had a crap day. That's how passionate I am about production and doing a great job. Like, I don't even want to be seen nothing less than that. So maybe think like that. I don't know. But for me, I don't see how people do it. I, I just don't understand it. Especially when you're getting all this great information about how to improve your life and how to level up and how to make things better. You would think you would be super motivated like, man, I'm going to go do the best job I've ever done in my entire life this year. And then actually hold yourself accountable. So as an independent contractor, if you want to do a better job, I'm going to give you one easy solution. Make sure you have your first sale in the chat early in the morning every day. And don't stop until you get as many as you're supposed to get. It's that simple. If you do that one thing, your whole situation will change here. It's literally that simple. I don't even care if you have a positive attitude. You could go be negative. You're going to get more business if you just go out there early in the morning. You could be mad about it. Who, who cares? You're going to do better in life. Go out there until you can learn how to be positive attitude about it. Go out there upset. 9 a.m., sleep in your eyes, mad that you got to go out there and do it. I don't care. Just go out there. Make yourself sit there or stand there or yell or whatever else you got to do to get the job done. And then start working on having a better attitude while you're making yourself be out there. But if you start early and don't stop till you get it, that problem will be solved. You'll be a successful business owner right away. But if you don't go to work, you're not going to be a successful business owner. It's that simple. Who's with me on this? Raise your hand if you're with me on this. It's really simple, you guys. Like, come on, man. You think I'm making this stuff up? You think I, I didn't go do it? I would not be sitting here telling you do this, do that, unless I did it myself. Knowing it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do.
I'm a truth speaker. I'm standing here in a podium as 100% on the front of it telling you exactly what you need to do. And what you need to do is start early and get your first sale in early in the day. Listen, this is how you do it. You, The first day of the week, the first day of your schedule, whatever your schedule starts, let's say your week starts Monday, right? You get out there early on a Monday, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, okay, check it out. You get out there eight, nine o'clock in the morning on a Monday, get your first sale in, don't let yourself stop until you get your quota, whatever your quota is. What is a quota? A quota is the minimum amount of sales expected of you in a day. Since you're a business owner, okay, you get to decide what your quota is. You get to decide. That's really cool. You get to decide 10 is the least I'm getting. 15 is the least I'm getting. 20 is the least I'm getting. Whatever your number is. Some of you guys need to have 30s by now, 40s. Because you're so good at this. Some of you guys have 20 as your number. and that, You done left that number a long time ago. Your new number needs to be 30. Because you're so good at it. Right? But listen, whatever your minimum number is, this is how you ball out of control. Your whole business life will change if you just do this. Monday morning, first day of the week, start early. Get your first sale in. Don't stop until you reach your number. You do that on the first day of the week. Listen, but nine times out of ten, what will happen if you're doing a really good job, you'll have your number early in the day. Right? And if you're like me, if you get your number early in the day, you still won't quit. You'll be like, hey, I'm glad I got my number early in the day. But that just means that I get to have even more than I wanted to have today. So you keep going. And you start your week like that. And every day you just keep stacking wins. Every day. So Monday you have a high day. And I don't mean your highest day ever, but a high day. Monday, you have a high day. Tuesday, you have a high day. Wednesday, you have a high day. Do you know what that's called? Getting the job done, right? Now your week is secure. Now your week is secure. You got 60, 80, 100 sales on the week. Now when it's time for the weekend, if you choose to take an extra day off, you can. You guys are doing it backwards. You're taking days off saying, oh, I'll make it up later this week. That's not the way you do it. You make yourself get the business and earn your days off. If you don't get the business, don't take no days off. I would say take one no matter what, because God says it. But other than that, I, I wouldn't even say that. Now, for those of you that go out and get your first sale, free sale at 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. or 8 p.m., what happens if you if you if you get your first sale at 6 p.m. and you're building momentum and you're really starting to rock about 9 or 9:30, then you can't do it anymore, right? Your momentum is shot. The only way you can take advantage of the phenomenon of momentum is to start early in the day. Because, you know, you'll become energized. You get out there at 9 or 10 o'clock and get your Love first sale. By noon, you have 4 or 5. And by 2, you have uh, 8 or 9. you got momentum, boy. You're getting fired up. You realize that you can do this, and you're going to do it. And you'll continue to stay out there. And you'll find energy within yourself that you didn't even know you had. But you got to take advantage of the laws of momentum. Bobby, you gotta get out Bobby there give me a stool. I'll hold it. Yes. Capitalize on momentum because if your momentum, if you if the beginning of your planting your momentum of seed for the day is at 6 p.m., momentum is not no longer your friend, it's your enemy. So take advantage of your friend called momentum. Start early and get out there and do it. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay, guys, let's look. Check this out, okay? I've done this with people before, especially individuals like, no, 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 you, no. Okay, so this might help some people out, right? So Monday. 
Maybe I can get a volunteer to come hold the side of this just for a second, just so it doesn't shake when I'm writing. Thank you very much. Well, just hold it right there, just so it doesn't shake. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I remember when you did this. Friday. Saturday. Sunday. Okay, now look. So, as a full-time worker, okay, this is, listen guys, forget the rule that you have to work full-time, okay? You're an independent contractor. You want to work full-time. Understand that. In order, look, you're a business owner. Who wants to have a successful business? Not everybody, not all you guys. You guys don't want a successful business? James Jelly, you don't want one? You want one too? Awesome, yeah, that's what I thought. All you guys want a successful business, right? Well, guess what? If you're gonna have a successful business, you need to have your business open most of the time throughout the week, right? If you're gonna have a business, no, no matter what kind of business you're in, you wanna have the business open, right? So look, what time is your business opening every day? That's what you need to figure out. Because the bottom line is, if you don't work at least eight to 10 hours, okay, look, if you're gonna work eight hours a day, you need to work like six days a week, five, six days a week, right? I'm telling you right now, look, you wanna be successful in this business, plan on working 60 hours. Don't plan on working 40 hours, you're selling yourself short. Plan on working 60 hours, the reason I'm telling you to work 60 hours is because if you try to work more than that, you might run yourself thin until you're able to do that. You might need to work your way up. Some of you guys might need to work 40 hour weeks and then start working a little harder each week until you're even able to do a 60 hour week. Some of you guys couldn't even do a 60 hour week because you ain't used to doing that much. You gotta get, you gotta get turned up and get going. How many How many of you guys remember when I talk about somebody running up a flight of stairs, right? If you haven't ran up a flight of stairs in a while and you run up a flight of stairs, what happens? You're out of breath, right? You're, you, you're like, <sighs> right? But guess what? If you was to run up and down flights of stairs all day long, then a week or two goes by and you run up a flight of stairs, you won't even be messing with your breath at all. You'll be breathing normal because you're used to it, right? But when you're out here on the grind, if you go try to work like a 60 hour week, you probably almost pass out because you ain't used to working three hours, much less 60. So you gotta work yourself up. You got to, I'm being real. You got to work yourself up. You got to start somewhere and get momentum and practice. It, it takes time. You need to condition your mind to be able to top perform. You can't just go top perform. You'll be exhausted. You got to work your way up to that. So the way you work your way up to that is you start somewhere, right? You set a, a type of schedule. So here's Monday through Sunday. Okay, so you got to decide what time are you going to have your first sale by? That's the number one thing you need to decide. Let's say you, you start your first sale by 10 a.m. And I would say some of you guys need to do 9 or 8 a.m., whatever the earliest is. So you start at 10 a.m., right? Now look, if you're going to work a 10-hour day and you start at 10 a.m., what time do you have to work till? 8 p.m. Let that soak in. Let that soak in. Listen. If you're going to work a 10-hour day, check this out. You got to work 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. But I guarantee you, some of you guys don't look at your schedule like this. You go out there whenever you feel like it, and then you stop whenever you feel like it. You have no accountability on your business. So how do you expect your business to be profitable unless you have some accountability as a boss? 
Look, if you was running a business and you weren't the one working, follow me. Imagine if you had workers to work for you. Imagine if it wasn't you that was doing the work and you had to assign the people that work for you what time they're going to start working and what time they're going to finish. I bet you'd look at it a little differently, wouldn't you? You'd be like, man, they're starting early and working late. Right? You'd be making sure your workers were out there working. Imagine you.com, right? Xavier LLC. What time would you have your workers start working early in the morning? Let's say you owned a construction company or some type of other business and it was time to handle a project. Would you tell your workers, hey guys, you work for my company, but look, Whatever you feel like doing today, it's not a big deal. I mean, we're not interested in completing this project or anything. I mean, you know, just chill or whatever you want to do, right? Do you think that's how you'd run your business? No. Or do you think you'd be like, yo, you guys need to report at a certain time, and if you're late, I'm firing you, right? You would do that to your workers, but you don't do that to yourself. That's the point I'm trying to make. You run your own business. And right now, you don't have no people working for you. You work for you. You are your person. And let me tell you this. If you can't get you to go to work, you'll never be able to get anybody else to go to work. Bottom line, you work for your company. You're the only one right now. And if you ever want to have anyone else working for your company, you got to do the hard work first. You got to be a person of accountability that can make yourself go hold a schedule, whatever it is, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., whatever it is. And listen, there's a, there's a, this is studying a craft because there's a lot that can go on between those hours. This is, you got to follow me on this. You can set up a successful schedule and then it's all about maximizing that time. Think about it. If you're going to have 10 hours out there, look, if you're going to have 10 hours out there on the field, think about this. Don't you think that the most you should be maximizing the potential of all those hours? Think about it. Don't you think that the best idea would be getting the most orders in possible for the most amount of those hours possible? Listen, this isn't rocket science, guys. You guys are passing out free phones. How do you think you're going to get the most business possible in a 10-hour period? How about putting in the most orders possible? That's what it comes down to. you got to be able to put in the most orders possible within that time frame. Now comes the professionalism because there's a lot that can go on in a 10-hour period. First of all, where are you starting to work in the morning? That matters. Well, it matters. Where are you going to start working in the morning? Because if you pick a crappy spot, that's going to burn up some of those hours. Right or wrong, who knows what I'm talking about? So you got to not only work those 10 hours, but you're also going to have to think a little bit. That might mean have a clear head. Because if you need to think, you might want to have clear thoughts. That'd be a good idea, too. Think about what I'm saying. You're needing to think. You need to be able to strategize and plan out your day so you can maximize the potential. If you're going to have a 10-hour day, what are you going to do in those 10 hours to make the most of it? Think about it. Where are you going to set up? How are you going to strategize to make sure that you're being the most effective possible? It matters where you set up. It matters how you're presenting yourself. How are you dressed? Are you, are you cleaned up? Do you look cleaned up? Do you look professional, right? Are you smiling? Do you have a positive attitude? All of this stuff is stuff you need to think about being a business owner. Do you have good credentials? Do you have enough chairs? Do you have enough clipboards? Do you have an extra battery pack in case your phone dies? Right? Do you have stakes 
to put your tent in the ground secure in case the wind blows and it blows your tent off. There's a lot that goes into this. You got to be prepared. You got to have everything you need for the day. Where are you going to eat throughout the day? Do you have a lunch prepared? Do you know where you're going to go for lunch? How, do you have a plan to be able to keep putting in orders at lunchtime without having to actually take a break? You know what me and Jess used to do when we were out there? We would make sure we would make sure that we didn't stop working. At lunchtime, we was eating while we were putting in orders. When it was time for lunch, we had lunch prepared. Otherwise, one of us would run and grab something while the other one's still putting in orders. We made sure we didn't even stop working for lunch. And guess what? Now you gotta figure out how you're gonna work all the way till 8 p.m. Look, what if you get kicked out of your spot? Are you gonna give up or are you gonna follow through? You got a schedule to keep. If you get kicked out of your spot at four o'clock, guess what? You're not done working until eight. Go to the next location. Go to the next location and set up so that you could finish off your day. Now look, that's one day, day one. Guess what the strategy is? Wake up and do it again on day two. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You get it handled on day one. You do what you're supposed to do all day on day one. You push yourself as far as you possibly can. Then guess what? You be responsible and you make sure to go to bed because you're serious about your life and your business and you know that you need to get some sleep so you can wake up and do it again the next day. So you're, you, you be responsible and you say, yo, what time is it? And you have some accountability. You're like, yo, I got to be to sleep by such and such time. I cannot be up. Right? It don't matter what it takes. Drink some water. Take some time off PM. Read your Bible. Whatever works. But go to sleep. Do not be sitting up thinking it's cool being up late when you got a business to run. You got to wake up early the next day and start putting in orders again. You can't be up just doing whatever. She doesn't know. And you need to do that positivity stuff. You need to make sure you're reading something positive when you're going to sleep and doing something motivating when you wake up the next day. Boom. Day two. Guess what? Same schedule. Putting in orders by 10 a.m., not stopping to 8 p.m. Well, whatever. Look. <laughs> I'm just giving you guys, I'm giving you basic stuff, whatever day. So if you're going to come in to meeting on Monday, right? You got to be in here. So you start putting in orders by 10 a.m. Guess what? On a meeting day, you might not be able to put in orders till noon, right? That's fine. Noon to nine. I'm making, I'm talking to you about a basic schedule. I'm not really getting into the specifics. I'm talking about accountability, making sure you're going out there and doing what you need to do 10 hours a day, eight to 10 hours a day. I would shoot for 10. That way, if you fall short, you're at least working an eight hour day. Basically what you wanna try to do is probably work 12 to nine on meeting days. Look, 12 to nine. On meeting days and then 9 to 7 or 10 to 8 or 11 to 9 whatever it is on these other days like I don't I don't understand how you're gonna have a different schedule than this you get to pick your own schedule but the catch-22 is nothing else makes sense but this so explain to me what other schedule you're gonna make that makes sense besides this one and you get to pick your own schedule, but guess what? This is the only one that makes any sense. You start immediately after meeting and you work all day. And then on the in-between days, you get out there early and you work a full day uninterrupted. Bob? Yeah.
I've given a lot of applause, like July, for instance, every day was 110 or more. Yeah, it gets hot. And we were killed despite that. So, Back. so you guys that were here that remember that and gal, I know you're getting ready. Yeah, yep, the heat. <laughs> but you need to start early because you know you, now is the time to start your early yeah. Because if you, if you get out there at eight or nine, you'll be really glad to come to July, August, because you're an eight or nine a.m. person. Yep. You know, it, it used to amaze me. It used to amaze me. Is this life? Life is a slam dunk if you if you plan on it. But you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta go out there and do it and, and start early, get your momentum going. Remember, I talked to you about the momentum, but the, the, don't start your momentum at this point. Because if you start rocking like a locomotive, and you know, the verifier shuts down and everything else, you're screwed. You know? But you get, you get, get out there early, you'll be glad you did. Because I, I think you, you, you know, I, I, I get tired last year of uh, the years before in, in, in midsummer of like, of like people that, that were close to first sale at four o'clock. Right? And then they go, It's so hot. It's so hot. Well four PM is the hottest part of the day, stupid. Right? Don't don't start at the hottest time of the day. You know, landscapers don't don't start doing their work at noon. Riffers. Don't start doing their work at noon. They're up there about 3 a.m., right? Right. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being a roofer carrying all that crap up there on those tile roofs when, when it's beating down on you? But anyway, start early. You got to do it. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. You owe it to your future. That's you it. Get out early to do it because only then, if you get the momentum going, do you have an opportunity to capitalize on it. If you start late, you've got momentum going. Thanks. It's a cancer all the time. Without you. Thanks, Bob. Now listen, you guys. Look, I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna be 100 straight with forward with you. Look, see this schedule right here. This is the boss schedule for everybody. This is what I would be pressing towards. This is what I've always pressed towards: maximizing the time. Ever since I got in the business. So on meeting days, 12 to 9. You're you're putting your first order in by noon. Grind until nine o'clock. Bam. Now check it out. In between days, Tuesday, Thursday, those days at nine to seven, ten to eight, right? Those are ten hour days. Listen, that's not even working all the hours you could. It's just a ten hour day. That's it. Any other job you go work at, that's how much you would be working. At this job, you just got to make yourself do it. Because at another job, you would go clock in, right? You would have to go clock in, start your shift, right? If you worked at a grocery store, you'd have to clock in, go get your register ready, right? Stand there all day. Listen to me. Stand there all day at the register, giving people change. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Until it was time to clock out. Then you'd have to cash out your register and leave. The only difference in this job is you got to make yourself do it. Nobody's standing there making sure you're doing it. So as a business owner, you got to make sure you're clocking in and you got to make sure you're clocking out. Check it out. Tuesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now watch. If I was you on Saturday, I'd do a 9 to 9, 12 hour grind. Now look, why not? Why not have one day a week that you actually work really long? I'm not saying do it every day because I don't think you're going to last long if you work that much. But if you work 10 hours a day and then one day a week you actually work 9 to 9 or something like that, that makes sense. Now look, this is the point, you guys. This is what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that everybody shoots for this. Not everybody in this room can even do this, you guys. I'm just being real with you. Some of you guys are not conditioned to grind like this. You're not. You have not been working hard enough to do something like this. You'll get on day two and fall off because you're, you're not used to working that much. But if you practice, 
and you get out there and you push and you condition your mind more and more and more, you will be able to do something like this. But you can't just do it just by saying, yeah, I'm going to do it. Because you're going to try and fail a couple times probably. But don't give up. That's the whole point. If you shoot for the moon, you land on the roof. If you shoot for the roof, you probably land on your butt. So the best thing to do is to aim high. That's the point of me showing you this. Look, if, you, if I don't say nothing to you, you're just going to keep doing whatever you're doing, and it's not working for some of you guys. It's not panning out. I want you to keep your job here. I don't want you to have to go somewhere else. Look, if I don't get rid of you, life's going to make you go somewhere else. And you're not going to be able to keep doing this job. It's not because it wasn't a great opportunity. It's because you wasn't working. You got to make a certain amount of money to survive, you guys. If you're not making enough money to survive, you're not going to be able to keep working. And then you're going to blow the greatest opportunity you ever had. Because this is not just phones and tablets. I believe greater opportunities are going to open up out of this office. And the people that are sticking with it and showing themselves worthy of the prize are going to get some really big promotions at some point. So it's not just about phones and tablets. But right now it's about doing what the next right thing is. And the next right thing is holding yourself accountable and having a good work schedule. Go out there. I would take a picture of this. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a picture of it and post it in the chat. But if I was you, I would hang it on my wall and stare at it. Because you need to get this in your head that this job it requires accountability. And look, I left Sunday open. Praise the Lord. Take a day off. Actually get some rest. I'm not telling you to go run yourself completely thin. I'm telling you to learn how to be a high producer. That's what, look, don't you want to be able to grind? This job will help you learn how to be somebody that can work 60 hour weeks. Not everybody in the world can do it. Some people work like 20 hours and they're tired. Oh, I just can't take anymore. I haven't thought too much. <laughs> you just worked a day and a half. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's more than I ever work, so it's too much. <laughs> I'm just being real. But if you condition your mind and you keep practicing over and over, you'll be a heavy hitter. You'll be somebody that can multitask and accomplish a bunch of stuff at one time. You'll be unstoppable if you can get good at holding a schedule like this at a company like this. If you could actually go hold a schedule like this, it would make you a better person. If you could do this. Because I'm telling you, not everybody can, not yet. Not everybody can go kill out a 60, 60 hour week putting in phones and tablets, dealing with all these personalities and all the weather conditions and everything else that happens. But if you practice, you could. If you actually practice. Do you think I could do it? Heck yeah, I could do it. I could work open to close every single day, run everybody through the mud. I'm telling you I can do it right now. I could go out day one, bright and early, not stop till the last order's going in, every single day, one day off. Why can I do that? Why do I know I can do that? Because I've been practicing grinding. That's why. And I can do that and be running other stuff while I'm doing it. Because I've been practicing. I know what I'm capable of doing. Right? I've been practicing. I've been conditioning myself to handle multiple stuff all the time. But you're not going to get to that point unless you practice and really take it serious. Bob? I would like for you to make a commitment to work this Saturday 12 hours. I'll give you a couple of reasons why. One is like if, 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 if you're new to the business, you've been doing seven a day or 10 a day or 11 a day, and all of a sudden you hit 20, you can no longer tell yourself you can't do 20. Because you did, right? You're working five hours a day or four hours a day or seven or nine or whatever, and you go up this Saturday and do it, do like a nine to nine, then you'll realize at 9 15 p.m. that you survived it, right? That you were able to do that, you were able to work a 12 hour day. 
and you'll look at your numbers from that day and you go, that's pretty impressive, right? The beauty of a 12-hour day on a Saturday is if Sunday is your day that you don't work. Sunday, day, Sunday is the day to pray for the Lord. Sunday is the day to relax, be with family and friends. So Sunday is your day to chill. You know what? When, whenever I take a day to rest, if I really had a killer week, my rest is better because I'm celebrating the week that, that I put in. I'm happy about it. I'm satisfied. I'm content. I'm, I'm impressed. You can do the same thing. You know, you take Sunday off to relax and you've only worked nine hours that week. Come on. You don't even deserve it. Put in 12 hours Saturday. Take Sunday off. Meditate. You know, you know whatever you want to do. Do it right. Do the things right. Do the drinks right. And that sort of thing. Be ready to go back out on Monday. But if you do that, you make that a habit. And... I always tell you. I imagine a lot of you have an have a, probably a need for financial catch ups, right? Well, this is a financial catch up opportunity that if you owe bills, collectors, car payment, rent, or what, fine, whatever it is, get rid of them. Get rid of them. They're lightening your load of all that crap you're carrying around on your shoulders, and, the, and you're seeing the light of the tunnel is brighter. But just put in the time. Put in the time. Just put in the time. You put in the time, you'll do the application. You put in a lot of applications, you'll do a lot of uh, activation. Yeah, there you go. You'll get nice checks in your life. You guys hear me? I was, just, I was just thinking, uh, you know, when we were out in the field, we were like grinding sun up to sundown. And it was intense, but I wanted to say that when we did that all week long and then took Sunday off, Sunday felt so good knowing that we accomplished our goal. When you take a day off and you haven't accomplished your goal, it's, you know, it's like, cool, it's a day off. But it feels so good when you're like, yeah, I hit 100 this week. And now I can rest and have peace, you know, and like enjoy that day off. It's just, it's a feeling. Yeah. Ow! She was. She was out there too. She was eight months pregnant, doing what I'm telling you guys to do, working nonstop. Brett, I'm not a heavy hitter, so there. I try to balance that out with working at least. My goal is 60 hours a week. There you go. Sometimes I hit 70 and it pays off. We appreciate that. But I don't take a whole day off. I like taking like a, a, a office day off. Oh, nice. So that way it's only half day. The, the other four days that I get full days take advantage of it. Wow, so Brett takes it, his one day off, he takes a week, is an office day. So that way he doesn't actually take a whole day off. So he takes one of the office days off, so that way all the other days he can be out there all day. Listen, you guys, I know, see, this is the whole thing. Like, people think in their mind, they're like, oh, he's just telling us to go out there all the time, cell phones and tablets. That's not what it is. Listen, it, I did this. You know, you got to think about that. I did this and I figured out how to do the job the best you can. And that's part of it. Me and my wife led from the front in this company and did all the stuff. We're just telling you what worked for us. That's what worked for us, staying out there grinding nonstop. We drove from Prescott to Phoenix every day going out to work. We had, look. And on time, and yeah, all that stuff. So I'm telling you what I've done that's worked for me. It's the best thing to do. Don't you like having a fat paycheck? I do. You know what I'm saying? Don't you like having a fat total every week? Like 100 sales or 120 or 100, whatever it is. That's what feels great. When you're barely making enough and you're like not having very much money and you're like stressing bills and like that sucks. Like nobody wants to live like that. And if you're living like that, you don't have to. You can fix it. Alex, how are you living financially, brother? Uh, for the last year being I'm super consistent, I'm good. I, I, I find something I want, I go buy it. Straight up, Alex, since he's got here, has been grinding since he got here. He just said for the last year, anytime he wants something, he buys it. 
He's not sitting around missing money and having gaps in his bank account. Why is that? Because he's doing this. This is what he's doing. What I'm telling everyone to do. All of our heavy hitters do this. That's what they do. Some of the people that have been here a long time have got to a point where they might cut off a little early and like go hit the gym and stuff like that. But for the most part, they're still getting in 60 hour weeks and pressing in most days to get the most possible. The people that are doing it at this job, and then when they don't, they feel it. I guarantee it, if they fall short on the week, they're like, that 60 don't feel like that 100. It just don't. That, that 55 ain't like that 102. It's just not. So it's up to you. You get what you get in. You get out what you put in. So listen, as business owners, please take this advice, you guys. Have a mandatory time. Have a time that you're going to get out there by in the morning and work till a certain time every day. That's how you're going to run a successful business. It's really that simple. Don't you see how it's that simple? The whole problem is the excuses that come up. When you start going, yeah, but oh, I'm not going to go out today because. Oh, I'm going to go out a little later because. Oh, I'm going to stop a little early because. All your becauses are trash. That's not, it's not good enough. Your excuses that you come up with in your head are not what real entrepreneurs think like. Real entrepreneurs do not use those same excuses. Real entrepreneurs think those same things and they just think, nah, that's not good enough reason to not start my business early this morning. Nah, that's not a good enough reason to not stay out late. They think the same thoughts you do, except they don't quit because of it. So, and guess what? Every entrepreneur has had to learn just like you're learning. You're not expected to know everything in life all at one time. That's why I'm teaching you so you can learn and understand it. But in order to actually get better, you have to do something with the knowledge that you get. Do you know the difference between uh, being smart and being wise? Do you want to know the difference? Being smart is knowing things. Being wise is doing stuff with the things that you know. Follow me on that. Being smart means you know some stuff. Being wise means you do something about what you know. That you take the stuff you know, right, and you actually do something with it. That's the difference. You can know all the right stuff. You can probably stand up here and tell us all the right stuff too. But guess what? Unless you're doing it, you're not wise. Unless you're doing something with this, look, I could give you the microphone. You could tell us a bunch of smart stuff too. But are you doing it this week? That's the question. Are you doing the smart stuff this week that you already know? A lot of people go, yeah, I know that, bro. Okay, cool. Then why aren't you doing it? If you know it, why? Because you're not being wise. You're smart. I know. You know a lot. I get that. But guess what? Unless you do something with it, you're not wise. That's what wisdom is. So, as an independent contractor, independent contractors get to be their own boss. Flexibility over when you work, right? You still do have flexibility, right? Because guess what? You get to pick what time you start. You get to pick what time you stop. You just can't change the fact that you need to grind hard 60 hours. It's just the type of business we're in, y'all. It's a grind hard business. If you want to be best of the best, don't you know there's people in this business that are killing it right now? If you want to be best of the best, you got to be willing to work harder. You got to be willing to be above the bar. And I take a lot of pride in our, our office here at Head Straight Up. I know a lot of the other companies and the other people that are in other offices. And I take a lot of pride in our group being a group that works hard. I take a lot of pride in our group being a group that produces high numbers. 
right? It means a lot to me, and it, you should be proud of it too. It says, so flexibility, listen to this, independent contractors earn more. Do you know that you earn more than regular employees? Why? Well, one of the reasons, because companies don't got to pay social security tax, provide you benefits, equipment, and stuff like that when they hire contractors. So guess what? Because we ain't got to pay all that stuff, we can give you a fat rate that you can make more money than you would make if we paid you hourly. That's what, that's the best part about being an independent contractor is you get to make more off the production, right? Imagine if I just paid you such and such an hour, right? Even if it was 15 an hour or something like that, right? And compare that to being able to put in three, four orders in an hour. Which one's better? Being able to put in more orders, right? So that's one of the benefits of being an independent contractor. You get to make more money than an hourly person. A lot more money. Who's who's happy about that? I is. Before I came here, I was making $22 an hour working a full-time job. And I make more money here. Before he came here, he was making $22 an hour working a full-time job. And he makes more money here. A lot more money here. Um, independent contractors can claim certain tax deductions. You guys know that, right? So you can claim business expenses, equipment, business travel, right? Deductions offset your business income, allowing you to reduce the income tax you pay, and you keep more of your hard-earned money. Another benefit of being an independent contractor. Independent contractors can experiment with different business ideas, right? If you was an employee and I was like, Go set up on 19th and such and such and stand there all day doing orders till your time to quit. That's not as cool as being like, here's a box of phones and tablets. Go do the best you can do. Why? Because you can explore different ideas. You can try different things. You can gain momentum off the territories. You can make connections and not always be at the same spot at the same time. You can move and produce more by being an independent contractor where you get, you got flexibility. You can have two, three things going on at the same time, right? You can have your tent set up and you can run down the street real quick and bust another move and come back and have people meet you here and go make a contact there. Stop by and do an event tonight before your day ends. You have so much flexibility as an independent contractor. It's an amazing thing, it really is. And then, independent contractors gain more experience. You get to do so much stuff, you have so much interaction and you get to try all these different ideas, you're more of a productive person than an employee, right? Employees are very limited to what they know. Employees are very limited to what they know. Oh, yeah, I swept uh, this hallway for 10 years. Oh, what'd you learn doing that? I swept this hallway for 10 years. Oh, how, what'd you learn doing that? Well, I learned how to get dust out of corners. And, oh, okay, great. Well, guess what? As an independent contractor, you get to bust all kinds of different moves and communicate with different people, right? And learn how to challenge yourself and how to do different business stuff. You learn how to do marketing. Right? You learn all kinds of stuff just with communication alone. The practice you get with talking to people, you get to learn how to try different stuff, deal, overcoming fear for one, right? It ain't that scary being an employee. You know exactly what you're doing every day. As soon as you go into work, you're going to deal with the same people doing the same thing. Guess what? With this, you get to challenge yourself and stretch yourself and learn how to become a better person. Your, your work experience is through the roof compared to employees. You face fears every day and overcome, right? You face challenges in critical thinking where you gotta think on your feet and you're on your toes and you're like, oh, I got this going on. How can I overcome this? How can I make this happen? You're a strategic thinker. 
That means you're way better than an employee. You got so much going for you as an independent contractor. Independent contractors stand out. You can choose to take on projects and clients that align with your goals and interests, allowing you to establish a niche or speciality. You gain more targeted and relevant experience than you would as an employee who may be limited to the projects assigned to them. As you complete projects, you'll be able to build a portfolio of accomplishments. That's basically like making a bunch of contacts, kind of being kind of like Alex, how people call him to set up at different events and stuff. You start building your brand. You start building your, your catalog of people that you know. You, you do a good job in a couple events. Next thing you know, you got other events lined up too. Right? You start becoming a popular person in the business. People see you and they're like, oh, I've heard about you. Didn't you used to do phones over there? Didn't you used to? Yeah, that was me. Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about you. They say you sign up everybody. Yeah. Right? You build up your brand. You tell me you don't, that don't happen. It does. Oh, yeah. Your people start knowing who you are. They'll be like, yeah, I heard about you. You signed my friend up. You got my mom a tablet. You did that. Yeah, that was me. Build your brand. You get to do, as an employee, you don't do that. As an employee, the company is recognized for everything. Right? Even though you work for Head Straight Up and we get recognition, you get personal recognition. Because you're a business owner. People know you. They don't know me. They might know me if you get them on our channel, but they know you. You're out there connecting with the people and then making con connections and being friendly and getting new, new connections and building your brand. It's you.com.